Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And all these are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sore. Still we are the voice in the desert crying Prepare ye the way of the Lord Behold He comes Riding on a cloud Shining like the sun At the trumpet call Lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee And out of Zion sing salvation of Ezekiel the dry bones becoming as flesh and these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise and these are the days of the harvest the fields are all white in the world and we are the labor in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord Behold he comes riding on a cloud shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice it's the year of jubilee and out of Zion's hill salvation comes Behold he comes riding on a cloud
Good morning. I'm Russ, and this is Anne, and welcome to Our Worship. Welcome to everyone at Cotman Thorpe, Bishop Thorpe, Acaster, and Stillingfleet. Those joining from elsewhere in the circuit, and to family and friends watching from further afield. We know we have people watching in Redditch, Nottingham, and Manchester, and you're all very welcome. Cotman Thorpe Methodist Church is raising funds in the month of August for the work of All We Can. So we're doing Active August. I hope you've already heard something about it. All We Can helps find solutions to poverty by engaging with local people and organisations in some of the world's poorest communities to end the suffering caused by inequality and injustice. So if you'd like to be involved in Active August, all you need to do is to set your own target and let us know what you're doing and then ask your family and friends to donate either through our Facebook giving page or a check to Colin or Nick. You can run, walk, cycle, hop, whatever you like to do and we can share our successes and try to raise money for all we can through donations and sponsorship. Steve, Catherine and Freddie Barlow are aiming for a million steps in August. We're going to do a cycle challenge. Colin is aiming to walk 150 miles and Jean is doing 10,000 steps per day. Ruth is walking and talking throughout August. What will you do? Let us know what you're doing or update through the CMC Friends Group on Facebook. Today we're really pleased to wel welcome Laura Gallery to share her thoughts with us and we pray for Laura and everything that she's involved with and doing at the moment. So our call to worship. Let us be quiet for a moment and think about our week and how we are feeling now. Are we ready to give God our full attention and worship him? Then let us come together to share in God's love, to lift our hearts and voices in praise and to worship, to seek God's blessing with a new and deep experience of God's power and generosity. Amen. Amen. A gathering prayer. Mighty God, we come before you. We think about the people in other places in our village, city, country and around the world who are also worshipping you. Bound together by your great love, we gather in spirit to meet with you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Goodness of God. 
drift down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship So highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all full of sick became poor. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin. together wonderful to me here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew and it comes at a point around halfway through Matthew's Gospel where Jesus has already been teaching and preaching for some time and the response to his ministry has been somewhat eclectic. People have differing views about what Jesus has been saying. He's just experienced people within his hometown of Nazareth disbelieving that he is who he says he is. He's just heard the news that John the Baptist has been killed by King Herod. And then in the passage that we're going to hear this morning, we see Jesus performing yet another miracle the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And this is going to be read to us this morning by David. So thank you, David. Matthew, chapter 14, starting at verse 13. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening 
the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, That isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted and afterward the disciples picked up twelve baskets of leftovers. About five thousand men were fed that day in addition to all the women and children. One of the brilliant things I think about reading the Gospels is that they are all different. They all obviously account for things that happened within Jesus' time, but each Gospel writer writes from their own viewpoint and includes things that to them seemed important to record. For instance, I always think it's amazing that the story of Jesus' birth, the thing that we celebrate during one of the largest Christian festivals of the year is only recorded in Luke's Gospel. So the fact that this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 is included in all four Gospels is perhaps an indication about the significance of the event. And it's an event that is just as significant for us today. As always, whilst we could spend years unpacking everything within that reading, there are perhaps a few things that we could focus upon particular about what that reading tells us in relation to what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ in August 2020. The first thing that we could focus upon is a reminder that being a Christian does not mean that life is just always easy. As we've already heard, Jesus and his disciples had been having a really hard time. Jesus had just returned to his hometown of Nazareth, where he wasn't greeted with some kind of glorious homecoming, but where he and the disciples were met with spectacular rejection. Jesus was criticised. He was dismissed. Some people in Nazareth were so angry with what he'd been saying that they threatened to throw Jesus down a cliff. He's then heard that his cousin, his friend, the person that baptised him, John the Baptist, has been killed by Herod. And we're told in verse 13 that when he heard this, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Perhaps in his grief, Perhaps in weariness, Jesus just wanted some space to be alone in a moment of peace. Yet this crowd of thousands then follows him. Life wasn't easy. And as we continue to live through a global pandemic, perhaps we don't need much of a reminder that life isn't always easy for us either. Being a Christian doesn't give us some kind of 
golden ticket to a trouble-free existence. And if we turn up to church, either virtually or physically, thinking that following Jesus means that we're in for a comfortable ride, then we're in the wrong place. Because what this reading also reminds us is that as followers of Jesus, we need to get involved. Now, the situation in this reading is becoming quite serious. It's late in the day. People are tired. This crowd of thousands in a deserted place, miles away from any kind of civilization, they're becoming hungry and there's nothing to eat. It's a problem. When the disciples realize they come to Jesus and in verse 15 they say to him send the crowds away so they can go to the villagers to buy themselves some food. John Wesley, the founder of a rival movement within the Church of England that was later to become known as Methodism, was somebody who saw the needs within society and was somebody who responded to them. Caring for the poor, caring for orphans, standing up against social injustice, speaking out against discrimination, caring for those who'd found themselves in prison and working hard for reform, pioneering education, were all things that were just as important as faith to living a Christian way of life. They were things that formed part of the Christian manifesto. It can be so easy for us, sometimes, as churches, to become complacent. It can be so easy for us, can't it, to become bogged down with the jobs that we have to do in church. And it is definitely easier for us to leave those difficult things that perhaps we don't really want to get involved in for somebody else to sort out. But that call to get involved that challenge to meet the needs of others was a call that Jesus gave so clearly to his followers when in response to his disciples who seek to send the crowds away Jesus says in verse 16 they don't need to go away you Give them something to eat. Focused upon what they didn't have or focused more upon the scarcity in what they did have, feeding around 5,000 people with just two loaves of bread and five fishes was surely an impossible task. But perhaps the greatest thing, the best thing we can be reminded of this morning is about what we do have. And at risk of sounding like a broken record, wherever you are, wherever you're watching this, just pause. Take a moment to remember that you are special. You are unique. There is nobody else on this entire planet that is the same as you. You have been given your own 
special gifts and special skills that nobody has in the same way as you do. You are made by a God. A God that doesn't give us some kind of golden ticket to a trouble-free life and a God who doesn't call us along just for a comfortable journey but a God that says whatever your cares whatever your worries whatever your problems as in verse 18 bring them here to me For whatever might seem impossible to us humans, anything is possible when it comes to God. Amen. you mm-hmm.
In these uncertain times, we need to pray more than ever before. So let us approach our God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father, we know that you are around and about every day and all day. We know that you see what we do. We know that you hear what we think. We know you hear our prayers. We ask, Lord, that we just pray for our world in its state of confusion, with a COVID crisis looming large in the headlines. We just pray, Lord, that we have here the National Health Service to help us to recover and to find a vaccine. But Lord, there are countries in the third world that have no health service. And COVID means death. And so many people have died. We just pray, Lord, for the confusion that this has caused. And how travelling to different countries can have such different meanings and different effects coming home from holiday, having to quarantine for two weeks. We just pray for everybody who's so concerned and pray, Lord, that we can find a vaccine to, find, to fight this virus. Pray, Lord, for people in this country and all over the world that fear for their own future those that face redundancy. With wife and family, families and parents to support and don't know how they are going to survive. We fear a second wave and we just know we have to put our trust in you and believe that you are in control of this. And that help us to see that there are some benefits that communities can be coming together and getting to know each other better because of the virus. Let's pray for our government and our country. Father God, we pray for those in control of our country who have to make very difficult decisions. those members of the government that spend their time debating and trying to make the best decisions, even though it's impossible to please everybody. We pray for our community, our village, the churches in our village, and the community centre, the library and the shops. We just pray, Lord, that we can be the salt of the earth, that we can greet people with a smile and we can do your work here on this earth as the opportunity arises and as we are led. Let's pray for our families and our friends, and those round about us. People with whom we can have influence and people who influence us. We just pray, Lord, for the people we meet day by day and just pray that we can support each other when times look hard, when families fall out when children are left 
between separating parents. Every situation is different and Lord, you know the feelings of our hearts. And we just ask you for people who are in difficulties to know that your love is with them. They are being held in the palm of your hand. And we pray for the people we know who are ill at this time. And we'll just pause a moment for you to name these people in your hearts. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We just ask that we be your servants. That we can do your work. We can spread your word. And given this opportunity to start talking to people and to share your love in this village. Be with us, Lord, in this coming week. Watch everything we do. Guide where we need to go. And give us the words to speak when we meet our friends. And finally, Lord, let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, help us to honour your name. Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you just as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us what we need for today. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive the wrongs of others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from all evil. For everything is yours, now and forever. Amen.
Go. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.